the global community has been taken aback by the entry of the Wagner Group into the Sahel region. This private military contractor with connections to Russia has sparked concerns about its potential impact on an already delicate security situation. Wrapped in controversy and secrecy, this enigmatic organization claims to offer security services and training to combat terrorist groups operating in countries like Mali, the Central African Republic, and Burkina Faso. In a surprising development, the Wagner Group has been succeeded by a new entity referred to as Russia's Africa Corps in its main strongholds across the continent. In today's video, we will delve into this new entity and the reasons behind its emergence. Additionally, we will discuss the countries where this new leadership aims to expand its presence. Unlike conventional military contractors, the Wagner Group operates opaquely and is frequently accused of employing unconventional tactics. Its ties to President Putin's close associate Yevgeny Prigozhin and the Russian government contribute to its ambiguous nature. The founders of this notorious mercenary group, Dmitry Utkin and Yevgeny Prigozhin, met their demise in an aircraft crash in August 2023, shortly after organizing Wagner fighters to march on Moscow in an attempted coup against the nation's armed forces. Since their deaths, the future role of Wagner in the region has been uncertain. This uncertainty led the new leader of Russia's Africa Corps and Wagner veteran Anton Yelisarov to assert in a recent video that they remain committed to serving the African continent and Russia's interests. Yelizarov also mentioned plans to establish a camp to accommodate new units joining the Volunteer Corps of the Russian National Guard. He emphasized that the Africa Corps, formerly Wagner, has always defended and will continue to defend the people of the Russian Federation and their interests worldwide. In late January, the organization announced via Telegram that it had deployed 100 personnel to Burkina Faso to assist current leader Ibrahim Traore in countering Islamist insurgencies in the Sahel region. Over the past few months, the new organization has been assuming responsibilities in Mali and Libya, with discussions underway regarding the construction of a Russian military facility in the Central African Republic. Analysts predict that new units will likely be deployed across Sahel states, the Central African Republic, and Libya, although the extent of their activities will depend on contracts with local governments. The Africa Corps, distinct from the Russian armed forces, is composed of volunteers and mercenaries. Its recruitment commenced in December 2023, offering positions to former members of the Wagner Group and potentially to locals as well. The establishment of the Africa Corps, tasked with assuming control of the Wagner Group's activities under the guidance of the Russian Ministry of Defense, signifies efforts to restore stability following the Wagner Group's dismantlement. Russian Deputy Defense Minister Yunus Bek Yevkorov spearheaded the formation of the Africa Corps, expected to be fully operational by the upcoming summer. The establishment of a military base in the Central African Republic reinforces the notion that the 100 members of the Africa Corps deployed in Burkina Faso represent both an expansion and the formalization of the Kremlin's military presence in the Sahel region. Yevkorov conducted several trips to Africa preceding the deployment in Burkina Faso. Notably, Moscow reopened its embassy in Ouagadougou after more than three decades of closure. Plans to reopen the embassy were announced by Russian President Vladimir Putin during the Russia-Africa conference in St. Petersburg in July. The embassy closure in 1992 coincided with Moscow's decreased involvement in Africa following the end of the Cold War and the Soviet Union's dissolution. This move underscores Russia's ongoing efforts to fill the security void left by the withdrawal of French troops from many of its former colonies in recent years. Being a major wheat and agricultural product exporter, Russia's offer to export food to Africa could help mitigate hunger and food insecurity on the continent. Africa currently imports nearly a quarter of its wheat, with Russia being the largest global exporter. Despite Western sanctions, President Vladimir Putin pledged to provide tens of thousands of tons of grain to African leaders in July, citing increased difficulty in selling Russian grain and fertilizers due to the sanctions. Some commentators express concerns that Russia might be leveraging its food exports as a geopolitical tool, especially amidst its conflict with Ukraine. 
The Food and Agriculture Organization has cautioned that the war may lead to a global food crisis due to Russia's invasion of Ukraine, disrupting world food supplies. In July, Russia withdrew from a year-old agreement that permitted Ukraine, a major grain exporter, to ship grain from its Black Sea ports. Opinions vary regarding Russia's motives. Some view its offer as genuine assistance to Africa, while others see it as a strategic use of food as a weapon. Concerns have been raised about the potential negative impact on African farmers, as increased grain imports from Russia could lead to a decline in prices for their products. Chad shares relatively open borders with countries such as the Central African Republic, Libya, and Sudan, where Russian mercenaries are also active. Officials from Africa, Europe, and the United States have issued warnings about the expansion of the Wagner Group into these regions. The Wagner Group is accused of providing support to local rebels, aiming to destabilize and potentially overthrow the government of Chad's interim president, Mohamed Idris Deby Itno. Mohamed Deby's visit to Russia in January marked the first official visit by a Chadian leader to Moscow in 56 years, and only the second visit by a leader of the landlocked Central African nation since gaining independence from France. During the Kremlin meeting, discussions focused on enhancing Russian-Christian relations across various domains and addressing regional and international issues. Specifically, Russia expressed its intent to strengthen engagement and cooperation with African nations. Dmitry Peskov, the Kremlin's spokesman, highlighted Chad as a potential African partner for Russia and emphasized Russia's commitment to deepening collaboration with African countries. Captain Ibrahim Traore, the influential leader of the Burkina Bay military government, has directed the nation's resources toward combating jihadism, implementing rigorous recruitment efforts for the military and volunteer defense forces. He has also stressed the need for external assistance, particularly in the form of military supplies. Similar to Goita, Traore has engaged in discussions with Vladimir Putin during the St. Petersburg summit and subsequent phone conversations, and military delegations from Russia and Burkina Faso have held multiple meetings over the past year. Although aligning with military regimes in Africa may not bolster Russia's long-term influence, it serves to unsettle countries including the United States, France, and neighboring Sahelian states. The military governments in the Sahel view Russia as a strategic ally, both internally and externally, eager to collaborate on defense matters. While the Africa Corps ostensibly aims to combat jihadism, its primary objective appears to be advancing the Kremlin's military, political, and economic influence in the region. Analysts speculate that the new government in Burkina Faso may seek to expand into Niger despite challenges posed by the presence of a significant American drone base and the recent military coup in Niger. As the Africa Corps adopts a command structure similar to Wagner's and involves former Wagner commanders, it's reasonable to anticipate that its actions will closely resemble those of Wagner in the past. Given Russia's track record of disregarding international law and human rights conventions, particularly evident in conflicts like Syria and Ukraine, a mercenary force influenced by Russia is likely to show even less regard for national norms of conduct during operations. Russia's reputation for flouting international law and human rights norms was underscored by accusations of war crimes and crimes against humanity leveled against it by Amnesty International on February 25, 2022. These accusations include waging war in violation of international law, indiscriminate attacks on densely populated areas, and causing unnecessary harm to civilians. The decision to operate under a different name, such as Africa Corps, in the region may be an attempt by the Wagner Group to distance itself from its controversial reputation and ties to the Russian government. The choice of the name Africa Corps may also aim to resonate more positively with African populations compared to the Wagner name, potentially facilitating operations and recruitment. However, the association of Africa Corps with Germany's unit that fought alongside fascist Italy in North Africa during World War II carries deeply offensive connotations for many Africans, evoking memories of colonialism and atrocities. This association risks sparking strong opposition and resentment toward the Wagner Group, undermining its credibility and trust in the region. 
The lack of transparency surrounding the motives behind the name change raises suspicions and fosters speculation about the Wagner Group's true intentions. The rebranding of Russia's Wagner Group as the Africa Corps in the Sahel region raises concerns, as it represents a deeper level of Russian involvement with ambiguous implications. This increased involvement may complicate international efforts in the region and further strain already tense power dynamics, potentially hindering long-term peace efforts. Ultimately, the rebranding highlights the intricate security challenges facing the Sahel region. While the group offers a possible deterrent against Islamist threats, its secretive methods raise ethical and geopolitical concerns. Its potential positive contribution to the region's future hinges on resolving these issues, promoting transparency and respecting local autonomy. Do you believe the name change will benefit the Sahel and Africa overall? Share your thoughts in the comments section. Don't forget to support us by liking this video and subscribing to our channel.